Welcome to Sports Econ 101. For those of you new to our show, imagine a few guys sitting around a bar without the drinks talking sports and business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, well-known sports radio personality Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX-TV in San Francisco. On this show, we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. In addition, we're going to ask sports trivia questions where we're giving away vacation to the first three callers with the correct answer. Our phone number is 888-660-4495. And you're going to use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina. The vacations are free. They're only request a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Check them out. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Today's trivia theme is Brothers in Baseball. And on today's show, we have a special guest. Sid Bream, who's probably best known for his famous game-winning slide in the 1992 playoffs, which gave the Atlanta Braves the final victory they needed over his former team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, to not only give Atlanta, uh, get him into the World Series, but it also started a 20-year drought for the Pirates for not getting into the postseason up until today. And we're also going to talk about maybe to try to get into Tim Tebow going to the Jaguars. Uh, unfortunately, Ken Norton died a couple of weeks ago. I want to make a couple of comments about that. Uh, the funny tattoo that was on a Dodgers fan's head. That's kind of a cute little story. Uh, Northern California has a new Mercy football rule. You won't believe it. A uh, wild no-hitter on the last day of the season. And a uh, nice kid giving Alex Rodriguez his grand slam ball that broke Lou Gehrig's record. And this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding 8% secured by real estate. It doesn't get any more conservative than that. Check them out at pacificprivatemoney.com. And you are listening to Sports Econ 101. And don't touch that dial because we're going to come back and we're going to get right into our interview with Sid Bream. I have a little uh, fondness for Pittsburgh, so this might be a little hard for me. But Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. center. If he hits one there, we can dance in the streets. The 2-1. Swung leg drive left field. One run is in. Here comes three. It's the throw to the plate. And the Braves win. Braves win. Braves win. Braves win. Braves win. They may have to hospitalize Sid Green. He's down at the bottom of a huge pile at the plate. They help him to his feet. And welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. And in the studio on the phone, actually, is the magic player of that 1992 NLDS playoffs, Sid Bream. Sid, welcome to Sports Econ 101. Great to be with you guys out there. Good. Now, uh, first of all, I... um, I got to tell you, honestly, I was a Pittsburgh fan there because the, uh, just a little background, my, uh, my father-in-law played for the Steelers for a very short time, and then uh, my great uncle used to watch Hannes Wagner play, so I always had a little, little soft spot in my heart, but actually, you, you played for Pittsburgh before Atlanta. I did, I did, I mean, I actually, that was my longest stint as far as my major league uh, playing days, I mean, I played five years in Atlanta, I mean, in, in Pittsburgh and only three in Atlanta, but... So both of them were uh, great places to play. Hey, that uh, that week leading up to the playoffs, I got uh, being a member of the media myself. I'm sure, uh, geez, I, you, you probably can't count the number of times some TV reporter came up and and, and asked you about uh, playing against your former team. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's always obviously been this time frame right now has been a little bit difficult back then. It was difficult because of uh, you know the situation that I was in, but I mean, again, in my opinion, I mean, the Pirates brought it on themselves because at the end of the 1990 season, they came out in the paper the very next day after we lost to Cincinnati in the National League Championship, and they stated that uh, Sid Bream was our first priority to sign for the next year, so with all that said, I mean, I was going, they didn't even get close to market price on me, and I was going to take their offer stay in Pittsburgh and they just give me a no trade clause and when they didn't even give 
to me a no trade clause and I'm going to take a ton of money left to stay in Pittsburgh, I just said, man, if I'm your first priority, I'd hate to see what your last one is. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. That co- what goes around comes around. And, 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 you know, for me, it came around that I was able to put it back in management's face a little bit. Wow, what even dollars and cents? It was just, uh, hey, they, they, they didn't put that no trade clause in there and then that was it. Wow. I, I got a, uh, a story that I heard. I want to hear it from you if you've actually heard the same story. That you're on second base, Francisco Cabrera is uh, up to bat, and apparently Van Slyke motions over to Bonds to tell him where Cabrera usually hits. And uh, Bonds flipped them off, apparently. And so, so, it, so, it, so it wasn't yeah. so much as, I mean, you know, he told him where Francisco would hit. Bonds, if you, if you ever have a chance to see where he was playing that night, he was only about five, five yards in front of the, the uh, uh, morning track. And so, better, I mean, Andy was trying to just motion him in just to move in some towards, towards the infield. And, and at that point in time, Barry flipped him off and said, you know, forget you, get out of my life, and, and uh, you know, know what occurred at that point in time but you know at the same time you know last year we were up at major league baseball and we were we were you know, going through that whole game uh and andy van slake and mark Klemski and myself were there andy said you know even if if, if he did have if he would have moved in the angle that he might have had to go in order to get to get to that ball that was hit it might have hurt him a little bit more because he might not have had been able to get himself righted or get him to get his momentum going uh-huh. the right way okay. to be able to throw the ball into home. I mean, he would have had to take some steps to get himself where he could throw the ball home. So the angle where he was coming from was a little bit less and he was able to get you know, right his ship a little bit better. Who knows? Okay. And, you know, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. But sure. At the same time, I mean, Barry, Barry did uh, you know, flip him off and say, forget you and then now he has something to say. Hey, who was the third base coach for the Braves at the time? Just curious if you, if you saw his arms waving to just go, 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 or you were just well, hey, you were you were just coming. <laughs> it, was, it was Jimmy Williams, and you know a lot of people have asked me over the years, did you see Jimmy Williams hold you up? And I said, I can't believe that he did, but if he did, I mean, shame on him. I mean, he had already tied it up, sure. and uh, you know the chance of getting another base hit. Or slim. I mean, you always put the pressure on the defense, and uh, so when that ball was hit, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't tell you to this day. Jimmy Williams said no. He he was waving me, but I couldn't tell you to this day because I don't remember ever seeing him. It's such a bang bang play. When you're when when you hit when you hit home plate, did you know right away, or did you have to look for the safe sign? No, I mean that's that's why you see in all the pictures. I mean, I'm looking up at Randy there just to make sure because. I, I didn't know. I mean, you're great. I mean, it was a was a bang bang. I mean, Spanky had to reach out just a little bit to get the ball to bring yeah. it back. And um, you know, a lot of people said, "Once well, made such a terrible throw." Well, today most guys they can't even throw the ball to stick in the whole plate, let alone put it just you know just the outstretch of uh, you know, where the catcher is. Sure. And um, you know, so Barry Bonds made a great throw. If it would have been right there. Frankie didn't have to move. I would have been out for sure but because he had to reach out to the right just, just a little bit to come back to the plate. I mean, that was the difference in me getting in there and reaching it by about four well, inches. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, you, you weren't known necessarily for your speed, but yet, you know, I've watched the clip a couple of times and you were motoring. Well, just understand this. I mean, I had I had, had five knee surges on my right oh. knee. I mean, an HDL and, and, and four other cleanups. As far as my knee was concerned, I had a big brace on. Back when I started in the game, I was I, I still believe that I have the the uh, record for first baseman for Pittsburgh. I mean, I I used to be able to run. I mean, I'm not I wasn't a Deion Sanders. I you know I wasn't an Andy Van Slyke, but I could run. Uh, and I used to go first and third with the best of them on my team. Yeah. But when with that knee, I mean, it, it definitely slowed me down to the point that. It wasn't the fact that I, I just beat like Deion Sanders in a race. I mean, I know that that's not real. Uh, you, you guys aren't saying, you know, right, okay, like you're going to beat Deion Sanders. But the fact of the matter is, yeah. he was going backwards when I was going forward later on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, uh, 
Hey, I'm wondering how many how many months elapsed or years elapsed or whatever I mean, before you actually had to pay for a meal in Atlanta after that. <laughs> well, I mean, you are correct. I mean, I, the, the sad part about it is, I mean, I had that one year because after that one year in 93, then I was gone. So if I would have stayed down there, you're right. I mean, I might not have ever had to pay for a meal for several years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm wondering, the, um, you know, how, how sore were you from that dog pile up? I mean, I, I wasn't sore at all. I mean, you know, you know about sports. I mean, the adrenaline. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just loving every bit of it. I've told people, I said, you know, I, I could have thrown them all off if I wanted to. <laughs> I adrenaline. So I wasn't hurt at all. I mean, it was it was just a great time of celebration, and, and uh, I enjoyed every bit of it. Hey, for all of us wannabes, share with us what that moment is like to be in that pile. That mosh pit in the middle of that euphoria when you have you just i mean it's game seven it's it that's it you know and and and, 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 and and to be in that moment please share that with us well i mean just this picture you know i guess the biggest best thing is it's just picture that you were you were doing something you absolutely love and you're getting paid for it first of all I mean, so you're, you're doing something that you absolutely love and you're getting paid for it, and now you're in a situation where the other 26 or 28 teams are sitting there watching you play. So, I mean, you were on the, you were on this grand stage, and and this all happens. I mean, it, it is just something that, you know, just look. I mean, for 20 years, I mean, last year that play was voted the fourth most exciting play in Major League Baseball history since 1990. Mm, that's amazing. I mean, so, I mean, it, it gets played constantly. I'm up in Pittsburgh right now. You know, they're playing against the Cincinnati Reds tonight. And it's one of those things where that, that, even up here, that play has been is being played. And I'm doing interview after interview because of that play back in 1992. Hey, uh, Sid, stay with us. We're going to cut to a commercial break because I do want to get into, like, you know, how uh, this curse of the last 20 years and how it's, it's you know, kind of – You've sort of been thrown into the middle of that. So, um, here, okay, here's the uh, first commercial break, first trivia question. What were the names of the three brothers who played the outfield for the San Francisco Giants in the 1960s? And again, the theme is brothers in baseball. The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this question. What were the names of the three brothers who played the outfield for the San Francisco Giants in the 1960s? Again, 888-660. You should know this one. Do, I need, do, do, do I need a clue or no, do I need, need a, clue. a clue? Do I need a clue or mm, <laughs> yeah. let me, let me fill in the uh, all that over. You're terrible. Okay, make sure, you <laughs> your, make sure you include your name, your email address. Speak slowly, spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because when Sports Econ 101 comes back, we're going to continue on with Sid Bream. Okay, great. Thank you, Sid. That's the first one. We'll just take a little bit more of your time, and then we'll be done, okay? Very good. Okay. Right, as soon as you're done here, I'll be going to get in a uh, car and going down to the game. So. Okay. Uh, that's exciting. Boy, that's, uh, there, there, there's yeah. going to be there's going to there's going to be some uh, c- kind of an electric feeling oh, inside yeah. that stadium. That's for sure. Well, I mean, you know, for 20 years you haven't been above 500, and now all of a sudden you're playing for a playoff position. Oh yeah. Tell me what it's going to be like. I mean, it's yeah. going to be rocking. Well, I can uh, I, I can only equate that to uh, the uh, the 2007 <laughs> Golden State Warriors in the NBA. They yeah. they had not been to the NBA playoffs since '93, and then uh, all of a sudden they're in it, and and then they they eliminate the Dallas Mavericks, the top seed in the first round, and move on. So I I, 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 I know the feeling in that building. So well, tonight's just 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 going to be terrific. Be yeah. You know what? On on on, um, well, we can get into it when we when we get okay. on here. All right. Okay. And then, um, Sid, did you get my text about um, the organization that you're um, helping with the foundation? Did I do what now? I, I sent you a text um, with the uh, found because of the foundation. If you guys ever come out or drink on it, oh yes, I wanted to speak to you about that. Okay. I did speak to the head of that night. I don't know if you remember the movie Radio. Oh, we love that movie. Well, Coach Harold Jones is the one that started that. 
Oh. I mean, so, you know, and now his, I mean, Coach Harold Jones still makes his appearances, but Harold, I mean, his son Brad is basically the one that is running that thing at this point in time. But okay. he said, absolutely. He said, I mean, I'm, he said, there, there's no doubt that they can bring a kid out there uh, to be a part of that. So we just need to hook you guys yep. up and start talking so that, uh, you know, they can, uh, they can find somebody out there to, to, uh, be a part of that. Okay, great. Yeah, just have them get in touch with me. In fact, before we let you go, um, just we'll we'll get into like what you're doing now. Uh, you know, your ministry. What Definitely promoting. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan, who will be joining us soon. And we have Sid Bream on the phone. Uh, famous 1992 NLDS, the famous slide. Okay, uh, first commercial break, first trivia question. What were the names of the three brothers who played the outfield for the San Francisco Giants in the 1960s? Uh, let's go with uh, Matty Alou, Felipe Alou, and, and Moises. No, 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 not Moises. No, not Moises. It's the son. It's the son. Come uh, on, come on. Felipe, Matty, and... Uh, Sid, do you know the answer? Well, I mean, I knew the, I knew the first one. I mean, Felipe Alou, I mean, Matty Alou, and... and um, Jesus. 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 That's right. Jesus. 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 Okay. So, uh, Sid, one of the things I was going to ask you about is, you know, after that slide, the Pirates have not been in uh, the playoffs for 20 years. And were, were, were people kind of looking at this as like, you know, the curse of the Billy Goat or the curse of the Bambino? I mean, how much did people put the pressure on you because of it? Well, I mean, that, that has been the thing the last several years for sure. I mean, they have called it the brain curse. And, uh, you know, I've heard that numerous times. I mean, going out on the speaking stage, um, you know, I, people up here in this neck of the woods, I mean, uh, people throughout the baseball community would call it the brain curse. And so I've, I've been identified as the, uh, the curse at this point in time. But thankfully, thankfully, they broke it this year. And last year, I thought that they broke it because they were 16 games over 500 oh, yeah. and on August 9th of last year. And I thought, well, shoot, they're going to break it this year, thankfully. Yeah, but you know what that, and then they went into a tailspin, and I'm thinking, man, maybe I do have a personal. <laughs> <interest."> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know what though is the difference between like, okay, let's say Bill Buckner. I mean, he made an error, so he did something wrong for his team. All you did was just do the best you could for the team you were playing with at the time. You know, and I wonder if and, they, you know maybe it's because you used to play for the Pirates. I, I think that that's I think that that's probably the situation that comes up the most is because I was I had just. You know, going from being in the last place in 1986 to, to winning in 1990 in our division, and then all of a sudden, you know, people don't understand the story of why I went to Atlanta. I mean, uh, you know, then all of a sudden, I mean, in one year, the Atlanta Braves goes from last place to first place, and, and we go ahead and eliminate the Pittsburgh Pirates. So all those fans have an animosity towards me because. You know, I just I just destroyed their chances to get back to the World Series. Yeah. Not only in not only in '92, but we also knocked them out in '91 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that, that was and that was the last. Uh, I'll know that was the last play for Barry Bonds as a Pirate because it was off to San Francisco for yeah. him. I mean, what exactly. are I mean, they just they dismantled that team at that point in time, and then uh, slowly got dismantled, and they weren't the team that they were supposed to be. And Jim Leland left because of you know they weren't going to do anything in order to to. Uh, you know, keep a quality team there, and so he left, and, you know, Dan Slag left, I mean, all of them left. It was, it was a shame. I wanted to ask you about the, the, the Braves, though. I mean, because now the, 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 the Braves are also in the playoffs. The Braves have the Dodgers, and uh, on paper, on paper, I say, looks like a mismatch because the Dodgers... Uh, let's just, the, the Braves were the Braves were the Dodgers' daddy in the regular season. My gosh, I mean, I, I, the Dodgers couldn't catch a break against these guys but again hey you got to roll the ball out there and see what happens but uh it it, it, it at least at the outset it looks like advantage braves in that series oh uh, i mean it, you, you are correct i mean and that's the, that's the great thing about not baseball but all sports you can throw papers out the window when it comes to the uh the playoffs and you know i remember that the uh the philadelphia phillies years ago had gotten beat by the dodgers I mean, I don't know if it was 12 straight games or whatever, but they had kind of beat all every game that they played during the, the course of the season. And then they, then they went out there in the, in the playoffs and beat them. So, I mean, you know, it, it, 
doesn't matter at this point in time what paper says. I don't care what analysts talk about. You know, who comes into that team playing hot? I mean, they're the team. I mean, look at the St. Louis Cardinals last year. I mean, the wild card. And they just went through the, the system and, and, and beat everybody. And it's, who's hot? I mean, that's what that's who's going to win. Yeah, exactly. I was going to pick up on that because Billy Bean, the general manager of the A's, he came out and said uh, that, hey, this, is, this whole Saber metrics thing where he, he uses facts based on who can get on base, that works over the course of a 162-game season. But in the playoffs, I get it's just, it's just a crapshoot. I mean, if, it, if the team gets hot, that could be it. You are, you are correct. I mean, you know, all, the, all the on-base percentage and how you hit against this certain well look at look at David Price yesterday. You know, with the Texas against the Texas Rangers. They talked about how the Texas Rangers owned him. And what did David Price do? I mean, he stepped up their plate and, and went and won the ball game for Tampa Bay Rays. It doesn't matter at this point. I mean, uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully for ourselves here, the Pittsburgh Pirates will win tonight against the Reds and then we'll see how far they go. But that's that's just the, the name of the game. Who's hot? Who's able to get the cru- crucial hit? Who's going to pitch the best one the mouth? I mean, um, you, know, you never know. You know, I was going to make one comment about how the fans were, were treating you. And I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, you're supposed to do your best. What, what do they want you to, like, tiptoe coming from third to home just so that the fans, you know, can have a... You know, have their way. I mean, that's just—it's just ridiculous. That reminds me, and, and by the way, we're joined by our partner Bruce McGowan, who's just uh, sneaked inside the radio booth. <laughs> but but that, that also reminds me of a, of the great John Gruden, who faced his former team, the Oakland Raiders, oh, yeah. in the Super Bowl yeah, in the in, in, in 02, And somebody was asking him about oh, his allegiance, you know, being a Raider. And now he's coaching the Bucks. He says, "Hey, look, man, I can't stand up here and just split myself in half." I'm the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, <laughs> That's it. and I'm here to beat the Oakland Raiders. And you remember what, how much you enjoyed beating the Oakland Raiders? Oh, again, well, what, geez, wouldn't you? My yeah. gosh. Now, that was the worst boo Al Davis ever Can made. you imagine facing a former employer? In fact, uh, Sid Bream can speak yeah. to it. A former employer and turn around and just stick it to him like that? Oh, my God. That's it. That's well, that's that's you got to stick it to the Pirates <laughs> with that slide home beating Barry oh, yeah. Bonds' throw. That was what a moment for you. That's, that's, yeah, that's, we're even that's the about. ultimate, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Sid, what, what are you doing nowadays? I understand you're in your um, college and foundation. For the most part, I mean, I, I have a son in college, but my what I do uh, is I go out and do a lot of speaking. And, um, you know, that is, that is my time claim at this point in time. I'll probably be out now about 40, 42 times. And um, you know that has that has been my that has been what I've done. And what has been your underlying message in your motivational well, speaking, in in your appearance? What what's been the one that you really wanted to hit home? Well, it's the thing that I I always I mean you know if you look at our country, guys. I mean our country. I mean uh, we're 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 just going way off base. I mean this this country was founded on godly principles. By the way, a country uh, that's taking a break. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. we, we gotta take a break sometime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Sid. Sorry, Sid. But I mean, you know, it's just it's just it's when I when I try to go out and and I and I, I get a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, I can go anything from baseball, I can say you know, I can talk about leadership, I can talk about all kinds of different things, but my talk always comes back around to my relationship with Jesus. Christ and, and what that means to me and how how other people can have that and uh, you know, that is that is what makes me get up in the morning that is what what uh, gives me a peace at night when I put my head on the pillow it's what you know, gives me a peace because my kids are all there and I know that you know if something would happen to me I'd see them again in heaven so I've always envied share with people I said I've always envied people such as yourself who have this strong faith because I do think. It not only provides solace, but gives you such a foundation. I am not a person of traditional faith, but I totally respect and get where you're coming from. And it's interesting because I, you know, find my faith in just, you know, we, we all find our faith in different places. But it, it, it is so important, I think, for people to have something, some kind of foundation. And I mean, I'm not being preachy here, but you know this better than I do. Well, I mean, you know, when there's, you know, back here in this part of the world, we had uh, four teenagers that were really, really close. I mean, what took place is one of those, one of them was a boy, and three were girls. One boy got into an automobile accident and got killed. Mm. I mean, there was no hope in these, these 
lovely girls. I mean, they were so tight, but there was nothing else for them to live for. And they decided they were going to jump in, in front of a train to end their lives. Oh, jeez. I mean, you know, folks, I mean, you know, when you're at that place, I mean, there's somebody else that loves them and appreciates them. And there has to be something else for them to give them a hope and a security other than, you know, somebody else here in this earth that's going to, that's going to, you know, you don't find too many friends that are going to stick up for you and get both well, friends like Christ well, yeah. And So I agree with you. I mean, hope, hope is lost in this place. And if people would just put their faith in Christ and, and understand what he did for them, I think their lives would be a whole lot better. I just want to ask you, how long have you been a Christian? I, had, I grew up in a Christian home, but it was 13 years old oh, okay. when I uh, gave my heart to Christ. Good. In that vein... And this is a thought-provoking one, Sid. What do you think of the athlete who just scores the game-winning touchdown, the game-winning basket? Little sideline reporter comes over and says, all right, I'm, I'm with blow, blow, blow. Man, what an exciting, thrilling play. Hey, you're the MVP. Uh, you give me your thoughts. Take us through that play. And the first thing to say is, well, first of all, I'd like to thank my, you know, Lord my, my Lord and Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, Then they go ahead and answer the question. Some people kind of, Roll their eyes at that, and, and but, but 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 what's your take on it? You know, my my take on it, guys, is I mean, shoot, that individual understands that his ability is not his own. I mean, you know, Christ gave him the ability to be out there, and for him to be able to give thanks to the Lord that that uh, that gave him that that chance to be out there. To me, I mean, it's nothing wrong. I mean, it's it's not that he's it's not that he's trying to preach his faith to everybody. He's just saying, Lord, thank you. I uh. You're the one who gave me the ability, and I recognize that. And I'm giving some of the praise back to you. Well, uh, Sid Breen, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the phone. I know you got to uh, head off to the game now. Uh, blessings to you, my friend, and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again, okay? Great to talk to you guys. I mean, they showed yourself out on the West Coast, and, and uh, let's go fuck. All right. All right, Sid. Go Pirates. Okay. All right, really quickly, cutting to the second commercial break. Again, the theme is brothers in baseball. Many people remember Cleet and Ken Boyer, but who was the third brother? First two callers with the correct answer. We're in a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this question. Many people uh, will remember Cleet and Ken Boyer, but who was the third brother? 888-660-4495. Don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Yeah, the guy had to cut it off. Floyd? Yes! Yeah, yeah. Very good. You missed the, you missed the, the little brothers. Oh, well, that, that's too much of an easy one for me. That was, that was oh, too you know, I, I have yeah, to apologize was, to you guys. That was low hanging fruit. I had yeah. such a good time today. I was out at the beach. Uh, Surfing? I surfed for two hours and 20 minutes, and the waves were incredible for wow. me. I mean, it was like, it was like, I was telling them, it was like hitting. Seventy on the golf course. Can you, you know? take pictures wow. or video no, for no, us? No, Thanks no, very no. much. I just, I, there were lots of people out there, but it was real mellow. It was, I would say lots of people, fifteen guys. This is out of Bolinas, mm -hmm. and I'm just about two hours into the session, and this beautiful young woman comes over. She's smiling, and she's like 22, 23. And I, I remembered her talking to her somewhere. We, we had surfed together with two other people, just four strangers, mm -hmm. for two hours once, like. Three months ago at Ocean Beach. Oh, wow. Isn't that so, great? Isn't that, wow. It's wonderful. So, you know, she was having a great you, time. You realize I looked through osmosis through you and now it's gone because you didn't take any <laughs> pictures. Thank you very much. It was good. Uh, you know, that was, that was good getting you. Know, good. Brave, yeah. 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 We got into the good get. in here the beginning part because we got into the, I, what I did was I played the clip oh. first. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Clip, clip to Andrew. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a rejoiner. I, you know, there aren't that many guys that are talking about Christ as much as they used to do. They, they, they do in little spots. Mm -hmm. But I remember in the 70s and 80s, Vern, and I'm sure you remember this, guys would talk about it a lot more. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jack Clark was into it. I remember on the Giants, they had a whole core of guys. It was just... Jack Clark? Jack, what? well, he kind of was a Johnny company. It was more like Gary Lavelle. Yeah, <laughs> Gary Lavelle, yeah. The, the and preacher. Bob Nepper. And Bob Nepper. Bob Nepper. And, and my dad used to yell at the TV, stop pitching with your Bible. Yeah. Well, well that's what Vita said later. Vita said, we had too many guys that were soft. They hadn't had championship years. And they were Jesus freaks. <laughs> mm. Well, they thought uh, David Robinson was, was uh, you know, a real pushover because he was Christian. Yeah. Too. Uh, but, kept yeah. Getting, but then Reggie White kind of put that a little bit to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. It's fun. Well, that was good. How did you know Cloyd? Oh, Cloyd, I did, you know, Chris I'm just, Gallo, I man. Just did it. Come on. I, 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 I am not worthy. <laughs> baseball. 
I got I got I got another one that I, I I thought was hard, but uh, okay. the, the encyclopedia over here. No, no, just baseball. I, I'm good with baseball. Okay. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and hey. Bruce yeah, McGowan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sid Breen, thank you very much. That was a great interview. When we got to the second commercial break, we asked this trivia question. Many people remember Cleet and Ken Boyer, but who was the third brother? And our encyclopedia <laughs> brother here, Bruce McGowan. I just know these baseball facts. I don't know why my mind is a repository for all this minutia. No, but it was a guy named Cloyd, Cloyd. Boyer. And yes. Cloyd, I don't believe, played very long in the majors. Okay, who did he play for? Now that I I think what? it was either one of the Yankees, Yankees or Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. What's the social security number? <laughs> I, I gotta, I, ask I, me I, a position. I can't give you that. What are the Powerball numbers? Gonna say another, another info. Because <laughs> the other two. Yeah. Dump them on something. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Ken and Cleet were, were third baseman. I don't know what position Cloyd played. Not sure. But, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Changing subjects here for a minute. Uh, How did the Boyers come up with that name? I can know. Mm, yeah, yeah, do we have Bill, Bill Bob, uh, do we have, well, I know Cleet. Cloyd. Yeah, Cleet. Cleet. Cleet's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cloyd, yeah. That's, yeah. that's an interesting It's got to be somebody's last name, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think on Lloyd. Yeah. Okay, uh, good old Ken Norton. He passed away. Uh, okay. Yep, Ken Norton Sr. Yep. Great, great. great. Fighter. Now, um, three I'm, epic battles oh, with Muhammad Ali. And he Ali. won. He won, won, won one, one of them. Won the first one. But he should have. I should have won a, a, yeah, at, at least, least one of the yeah, other two. Yeah, that, that's correct. And he broke Ali's jaw. Yes. He, yep. Yes, he did. Yeah. So I got a, got a few notes here. I thought were kind of interesting. Um, you guys remember the original Rocky movie? Okay. So it's amazing to me how many of the comparisons between this. All right. So Ken Norton breaks Ali's jaw. Now in the movie Rocky, he kind of breaks the he breaks the ribs of, of Apollo Green. Green, right? Apollo yep. Green yeah. Ken Norton visits Ali in the hospital, just like Rocky. They were kind of, they have to mm-hmm. both be in the hospital at the same time. And and Ali tells Norton, I never want to fight you again. Ain't gonna be no ain't gonna be no rematch. Yeah. Ain't gonna be no rematch. Yeah. Yeah. No rematch. Yeah. 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 Carl Weathers said there's a dragon I'm off the off the floor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Carl Weathers, a former yeah. Oakland Raiders. That's, that's right. right. Carl Weathers was a good player. He was a DB, player. was he not? No, he was he was a linebacker. A linebacker. And a okay. special teams player in the early 70s. Yeah. That's one of those great Raider teams. And, and it's amazing because that guy has a stellar body. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then when um, it comes to another fight between Norton and Ali, uh, Ali rallied to win a narrow split decision. And remember the first Rocky, there was that very split decision, right? Right. Okay, and in the, in the Ali fight, there were unanimous boos at the stadium, and that was September of 76. Because you know? they thought because they thought yeah. that, uh, Norman won. that Norman Norton had won the fight. So very similar, yeah. you know, to, to, to Rocky. I thought that was kind of interesting. 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 And then, of course, uh, you know, his son, Ken Norton Jr., yeah. played for the right. Cowboy he, Lackers. He's, he's, he's coaching. Is he coaching yes, he up in Seattle? And he's on the coaching staff yeah. for Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Was he coaching the linebackers? Linebackers, oh, yeah. Wow, I tell you, that team scares me. Yeah. And yeah, and, he, and, and it was nice that Pete, yeah, Pete Carroll yeah. uh, had him on his staff at USC, I and, know, I, and then took him that. with him to Seattle. Yeah, oh, okay. and the only reason why I know that is because USC was in town to uh, to play a game, and I and I sat down and did a little thing with with uh, with Ken Orton Jr. And, uh, and I said, "Boy, what do you miss most? I mean, you miss being around the guys. You miss what do you miss most but not playing? Well, I miss those checks." <laughs> 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 well, you think about three rings in a row. Three rings in a yeah. row. Two with Dallas, yeah. one with the 49ers yeah. from 92 to 94. That's amazing. Yeah, that, 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 exactly. That's great stuff. Um, yeah, that was a little frustrating to me watching the Seattle Houston game. Okay. <sighs> okay. Why does he throw that pass? Jeez. And of all yeah. people to make the play, Richard Sherman. <laughs> the guy, the guy well, wow. If, you, if you're a Raider fan, that was about, a stud play. If you're a Raider fan, how about the pass that. Uh, was thrown right in the direction of the defender for Washington by uh, I can't even remember who was quarterbacking for the for the Raiders. My mind is still on those ways. Not Pryor. Pryor was out. Their backup. Uh, oh, Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn. He oh, throws boy. a pass. He just telegraphed it, and this defensive back for Washington just said, "Oh, thank you, thank very, you much. very much." And I was at that game with a cascade yeah. of booze coming oh. down. I mean, he just couldn't. You <laughs> oh. know, he, he 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 can't run. No. Okay. No. And no, uh, no. and I and I asked I asked him after the game. I said, "Did it seem like?" By the time you counted to three, you had a hand in your face. <laughs> and he was like, well, I, yeah. you know, he's trying to, you know, come with something. That's what's about Peyton Manning, is yeah. that he's getting rid of the ball in three seconds. 
Well, he has, you know, he has left side of his... He has so many, Manning has so many weapons, but though. He, but I mean, it's amazing to me, Vernon, the left side of his offensive line is hurt. I mean, Ryan Clady, they're all pro yep. tackle, and the center, I believe. Yeah, they got a rookie tackle in there, yeah. guarding his blind side, and son of a gun, he's, gosh. He's having an incredible season. You know what, a great thing about Manning, because I, 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 I was in Denver for the Bronco Raider Monday night game, and, I mean, the... The Raiders were giving him every kind of look they could. I mean, we were making adjustments on the fly. They were and and, and Manning would 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 adjust his cadence mm. to make the Raider <laughs> defense shift yeah. to show him something. And then right there, Manning would call an audible mm. and adjust to that and hit the open man. It's like he couldn't even all, in, all write within the all within yeah. seconds. Yeah. I think he had thirty one to thirty six or something in that game. That yeah, was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. And then threw and yeah. threw four more touchdowns over the weekend. God, the man the, the, the man's a machine. Can, can you can you thirty six years of age? I know, and with a neck injury. Yeah. Like, can you imagine wow. being the the, off, the defensive line and how frustrating <laughs> that would be? You know, you're ready to get in there and three seconds later, boom, the ball's oh, gone. gone. I mean he can't really do anything. Yeah. And he's such a charismatic guy he's off the field. Guy. I mean I and, and, and just notorious pitch man for whatever product yeah. is out there. I gotta, I gotta believe his price tag has gone up Ooh, well, with every like, touchdown yeah. pass. Ka ching, ka ching, ka ching. Like ching. Hudson could be his brother though. Eli playing for the oh, 0 and four. Oh my gosh! Giants. The two-time uh, Super Bowl champions are zero and four. That's yeah, unreal. That, that's a little scary. That's crazy. crazy. They're 0 4. The Steelers are winless. Yeah, and Man. the Redskins were almost winless, and they were the NFC champions of the East last year. So you know, NFC East champs, and they're if they didn't beat the Raiders, they'd be 0 and 4. Wow. Okay, quick question for you guys. Uh, for, you saw the wild no hitter. Where, where was that? Yeah. The wild pitch. Yeah, the wild pitch. Okay. I think this is the first time that's happened. Yeah. A game has ended in that fashion. A wild yeah. pitch yeah. with a no hitter. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I was thinking about the weirdest endings to baseball games. What, what you guys are off the top of your head can you think of anything strange? While you're thinking about that, let me okay. tell you about the one I was thinking. Okay. Watching a Giants game and it's bases loaded. Uh, they're playing in San Francisco, home team, right? And I can't remember who they're playing. I think it was the Phillies. And they, they or excuse me, not bases loaded. It, it there was men on second and third mm. with two outs. So they decide to intentionally walk the, the whoever the batter was to load the bases to get the third out, right? The, the last pitch of the intentional walk is a wild pitch. He throws it over the catcher's <laughs> head, and the guy scores from third. And wins. That's how they won. Some bizarre ones, man. I, I'm taking yeah. a one that is maybe not so unconventional, but a game five of the night of the 2002 NLC, uh, L, NLDS, Giants in Atlanta, tie series 2-2. Giants are up by uh, two runs in the ninth. Runners on the corner. Gary Sheffield's up with one out. Hits a bullet. Snow grabs it, tags First base throws to second. They tag out the runner, and it's a double play. Boom, boom, like that. The game's over. It's like, so what happened? Wow, they won. Even react. Yeah, and the, and the Braves didn't even. They're like, what? It's yeah. over. Yes. Yeah, so excuse <laughs> me. What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to football for just a quick minute, pal. Did you guys hear about the mercy rule for football for the seven to thirteen year olds? Did you hear about this? They have, high, they have in high school. I mean, it's different. Yeah, yeah but this but, is this is a little different. Yeah. It does. Okay. If uh, they're going to institute stiff new penalties, and of course this isn't. Northern California. Uh, institute new stiff penalties for any teams that beat opponents by 35 points or more. Mm. They're actually going to fine the coaches $200. Uh, they're, excuse me, they're going to fine the teams $200, and they're going to suspend the coaches for all that league activities for two weeks. That's a little insane. Isn't that's, that's crazy? I mean, like, that's, yeah. that's crazy. I mean, I understand. I'm sure that's brought up by some disgruntled parent yeah. who's got a kid on one of the teams yeah. that are just getting. Just, just getting just smashed each week. Yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and what, what little power this parent has has just imposed his yeah. will it's, to change I mean, the rule. And I understand the, you know, the reason that they propose something like this. I mean, nobody should run up the score, but that's absurd. Come I, on. Yeah, they said here, some players... What if you're not trying to run up the score? What if you're just running the football and yeah. you just run yeah. through these guys like Swiss cheese? <laughs> yeah. What are you supposed to do, fall down? Yeah. yeah. I guess you're supposed to take a knee in the third quarter. Well, they said one of the problems is that these 13-year-olds who hope to serve uh, as a high... Is, oh, excuse me. Let me go back. Okay, so some players have begun insisting that their development is being hurt. Okay, One team has stopped attempting any field goal, leaving the kicker unable to attempt any scoring kicks except extra points. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a problem for a 13-year-old who hopes to serve as a high school place kicker. Yeah. In, in the 
fall of 2014, right? Sure. So, a bunch of former soccer players anyway. Yeah. Uh, just get them for the I soccer want to kick a ball. touchdown. I want to kick a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. 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 Remember yeah. said that, Gary? You're prepping. Yeah. Yeah. I almost ran him off the field. I want to kick a touchdown. Yeah, so it says here, the players on their son's team are afraid to score once they get a lead for fear that the coaches will be penalized and the team won't be able to play. So I guess what do you do? You purposely let the other team score? I guess. And then you, you do uh, it again? Uh, just keep it above, yeah. like, 30 you know, points? What league is it? Where is that? In North, Northern California, uh, Sacramento. Edward, I've been oh, doing, I've been doing some my, uh, some high school, local high school football games on the internet radio here in Marin County, yeah. and I'd say seven of the games have been blowout games, and they've had a couple of times. That what they do in high school is that they run the clock. Anytime there's no timeouts unless there's a timeout. So even if the ball goes out of bounds, the clock continues the clock to run, continues to run okay. and the game is over quickly. That's like Pop Warner. And it's and so Marin, just... Marin Catholic, which is our number two ranked team in Northern California, has been winning by an average score of forty eight to fifteen. You know, that's so, God, like an old timey basketball yeah, score. I mean yeah. so so they're just running the clock the last half part of the game is just, you know so that's a scores uh, decision. I mean, who's making that, that, that is a rule. I guess it's a high school rule that's instituted here in California. No, that's not speaking, so of, bad. speaking of rules, yeah. and I and and and, and I and I, I I apologize for 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 burying the lead of the weekend coming up. But what is going to be done about the last baseball football stadium oh, and these God. scheduling yeah. Yeah. issues insane. when it comes to baseball yeah. playoffs? And football games. Keep it. Oh, the, yeah, Raiders, the Raiders. Raiders going to play Raiders, what? Eight thirty. Raiders night? play an eight thirty-five <laughs> Sunday night kickoff yeah. with the Chargers because the grounds crew they need at least eighteen to twenty hours to convert it from yeah. baseball wow. to football. That's crazy. Well, that's okay. The people in New York they have nothing to do at two a.m. Right. Well, they can start watching the. Uh, you think the people in New York are interested in the San Diego Chargers <laughs> against the Oakland Raiders? Yeah, well, I don't think so. The, the, those have <laughs> got a little cabbage on yeah, the Yeah, right. right. Come on. There's so much more action on Sunday than the 49er game. No, but, 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 I, I, mean, I hear you. But really, yeah. I mean, it's kind of. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. It okay? is embarrassing. Everybody else in the league, they got they got a yeah. football only stadium yeah. and a baseball only stadium. And neither one of those teams is happy with their stadiums. I mean, the yeah. Raiders kind of, eh, so, so. But, they, but, they're, they're ha- but I have to be, oh, Edward, you're, you're a billionaire. There's gotta be, there's, 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 there's <laughs> I'm gotta, a trillionaire. No, there's, I'm there's gotta There's got to be enough of them yeah. here to be able to, you know, fund two different states. Uh, we're we're yeah. talking about a billion, uh, what, a billion and a half? Well, you know, here in the Bay Area, look how difficult it is. I mean, the land. The, the San, land. San Francisco, for them to build Pac Bell Park, they had is to use it, is money. It, is, is it the land, or is it, or the is, land. Is, it, is, it, is it so much that, or is it so much... These people who have the money. That's part of it, too. Want to be in the position to manage the building that they're funding? That's, that's, I, I that's part of it. I think it's competition. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll, you know what? We'll have to get someone on, yeah, the, uh, that's a good uh, topic. on, the, on the show for that's that. That's a very good topic. Yeah, I, mean, I, know, I mean, I can understand. I mean, if I, if, if I, if I spent that much money, I ought to be able to manage the, 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 yeah. the building that, I, that, 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 that I'm – you know, fronted all the Makes money sense. for. You know, it'd be okay. great. A great and, and, and I and I want a baseball team as my tenant. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I, 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 I get years. that. But I mean, this just it just raises all kinds no, of, you, of okay, issues. You said, but during non-baseball season, then you can have like concerts and stuff yeah. on the days on the right. Game, which kind of ruins the field. You know, Pat Gallagher, the former Giant front office guy, and I know our audience doesn't know who he is, but he was around the Giants organization for. Almost thirty years. Okay, well, we should get him. We'll get him on. Okay, yeah, we yeah. gotta we gotta cut out here yeah. for the third commercial break. Here's the trivia question again. The theme is brothers in baseball. Who next time we're gonna take a, choose a different sport? <laughs> you too good at this. Okay, no, just baseball. Andujar Cedeno. Uh-huh. What's his brother's name? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, gee. No, Jesus was the uh, Lou brothers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first three callers to protect the answer on a free three-day, two-night stay at Lighthouse Resort. Call 888-660-4495 to answer this question. Who is Andujar? Daniel's brother, and he obviously plays baseball, or we wouldn't have him on the question here. Don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Is the outfitter is it, from, is it a Cesar Zidane? Yeah. Or uh, is it the outfitter from uh, Houston? Uh, the guy Toronto. From, uh, Toronto. I'm thinking the guy that him. killed his girlfriend, or allegedly oh. killed her, but he was he was let off. The Cedeno who played in Houston back in the 70s. What was his name? Remember, he shot his girlfriend in, in Puerto Rico, oh, and then yeah, he got, yeah, they right. didn't have enough evidence, so they let him go. But the family, wow. uh, he gave the family, I guess, 10 grand or something. Well, that's enough for a hush yeah. Well, yeah, there was a guy, and the Giants had a player like that that just came up as in the minor league. Yeah, a uh, 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 first baseman, but Bill, yeah. Bill, uh, uh, not Bill. Yeah, Rowe. I know you're talking well, about Bill. You, Love. But you know, <laughs> yeah. you, he, played, he played with the San Jose Giants. Yeah, yeah. He killed, he allegedly, well, he was involved in some melee where somebody was killed. Mm-hmm. 
It's like that giant, you know what happened at that giant Dodger thing, that fracas where the guy got stabbed? It sounds yeah. like the one guy slammed him, uh, and there was just a all out brawl, and one guy was going to kill the other guy. And so, unfortunately, yeah, it sound like he was so innocent. Wasn't both he? of them yeah. sound like a couple of punks. A couple, couple yeah. of little hoodlums. You know, and I hate to say it, too, because the parent, I saw the thing with the mom and the dad, and yeah, I, they must be agonizing the brother, the son. They could leave a kid like that. Yeah. And you were, apparently, he was, yeah. your father was around Mr. the area. Mr. Ruff, right? yeah, and the guy was living up in Fort Bragg. I know what those kind of people are like. I have friends of mine from there. That's a wild mm -hmm. kind of subculture up there. It's not mm -hmm. a real, it's almost like an inner city situation. Not a lot of yeah. killing, but it's a lot of dr dysfunction, yeah. drinking, and a lot of drugs. It's bad. Speaking of bad, anybody see the ending of uh, Breaking Bad? I heard about it. Wow. I got a, <laughs> what a finale. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. I haven't seen any of the... It's uh, supposed to be really yet. good, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's, that's the one the next place. Can we, sell, can we tell them what happened? You get all five seasons. Are, yeah. are you right. a big fan of it? But you have, to, but you have it. to... You, okay. you have to start with season one. Yeah. You the, have the to... The key character is, is killed off at the end by the, by the uh, government agents or something? The key character, uh, the, the drug dealer, the guy who's got cancer. Government agents? No. No, he doesn't kill off. Somebody gets is killed off. Is it the end of the season or end of the whole show? End of the whole, end of the whole show. show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, why? I thought it was so popular. But the guy well, wanted to move on. They decided to end it. And, yeah. Yeah. Was it six years? Five. Five years? That's pretty good. Five, five full years. How long was uh, Entourage on for? Seven. Three? Seven, Seven years? years? Wow. Well, I like it. You know the one? I've seen it. I've only seen it a handful of times. It was really good. Homeland. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. The, 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 the new season just started. I gotta say, really good, I love, man. I love Claire Danes. She's terrific. At she that. is. Uh, Boy, I can't. I I can't think of any other actress who could play that role. Yeah, like she has. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, she's amazing. I was just really like good. everybody loves Rain Man. Really like that. <laughs> man, <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch that much TV, but Jerry I'll watch that. Yeah. And and yeah. and a CIA agent was show. on CBS this morning, uh, just talking about. She, she's got a book coming out, and, uh, and she says for as great a role as Claire Danes is playing mm. in Homeland, it's so unrealistic, you know. Yeah. But uh, she's yeah. like, cell phones in a federal building? No, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, but it's just, but uh, anyway. Well, it's, it's, it's Hollywood. You know why I can't watch too much TV? Because I'm preparing for the show. Hello. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Yeah. Just have a couple minutes left. Here you go. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glando and Bruce McCann. When we got to the third commercial break, final one, we asked a trivia question. Who is Andujar Cedeno's brother? Maybe we should get him on the line and ask him. Joaquin? No. Roger? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Fred? Sam, Sam Fred? Domingo. 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 Nice for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't, know half, I don't know half the guys that are playing these days. You ever, well, you have yeah, to because you're, you're, but I, I don't know half of them. Yeah, I used to. Uh, yeah, I figured that was kind of tough. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, quick little thing here. Uh, the New York kid gives the Grand Slam bow, ball back to Rodriguez. Nice, that? nice, 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 nice gesture. Nice gesture. Old year old yeah. kid, right? That you know, he broke, yeah. uh, Rodriguez breaks yeah. uh, Lou Gehrig's record for hitting Grand Slam on the twenty fourth. And uh, the, what, what, what did what did what what did A Rod give him? Well, he said, uh, "Hey, buddy, nice catch." That's all. That's all he did. Come, come on! on. No. no, no autograph bat, no jersey, no. Uh, come oh, on! Come on. Gonna be kidding me. No, that's, I, I, that's, I, all I, that's all I have here. Hey, I'm, Rod. Calling, I'm calling shit. No. <laughs> oh my God, man! You <laughs> rotted kid. Rod. No, kid had to get some. So the kid I'm said, "I gotta believe the kid got some." He, he must have got. He some. probably got something. He goes, there, uh, "The kid gave it back because he felt the slugger had worked hard for the feet and deserved it." Well, you know, Good. A Rod was a great player. At one time, he was the best in baseball. It's just a shame what happened to him. The steroids, the money. You know, he, he, well, he's not a bad person. He just is a little full of himself. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get Madonna in your life, that'll happen. Yeah. Okay, thoughts for the day. During Madonna, my, okay, yeah, so, you, well, that's okay, right. so guess who said this? During my 18 years, I came to bat almost 10,000 times. I struck out 1,700 times and walked maybe 1,800 times. You figure a ball player will average about 500 bat at bats a season. That means I played seven years without ever hitting the ball. Whoa. That was Mickey Mantle. Oh, my goodness. And wow. since here, I became a good pitcher when I stopped trying to make them miss the ball and started trying to make them hit it. That was Sandy Koufax. Wow. And uh, 
uh, Jim Murray sports Jim Murray sports writer said about Sonny Koufax. He said Sandy's fastball was so fast, some batters would start to swing as he was on his way to the mound. <laughs> <laughs> tune in next week. That's pretty to, mad. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away more vacations for answering sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host Edward Brown. Good night, America. We'll Good see night. you next week. So long. <laughs> Is that, oh, that was uh, that the wrap? Always fun with you guys. Oh, yeah. Always All fun. All right. Good. So I hope we all get uh, toward the end of October.